and no matter what, I feel in great. Om Shanti and welcome to Light of Knowledge. For those of you who joined in last time, you would know that we discussed a beautiful topic called love and try to find its true meaning. True love is true acceptance is what we learned the, the last time. And this time around, we have Sister Shreya again with us to take this topic even further and understand it much better. Welcome to the show, Sister. Om Shanti. So sister, last time when we were discussing um, a very powerful example of letting my child play in the rain <laughs> um, and even though I love my child, how do I be accepting of that behavior? Yeah. So can you help me understand, sister, what is it that I should say, should not say, should do, should not do so that she doesn't go out and play in the rain and get ill? Yeah. The first thing is that um, we did talk about accepting this point of view that if she wants to play in the rain, she's right. She's right from her point of view. If we were in her place, it was raining heavily, even we would want that. So there's nothing wrong in that. I think that's pretty much that we understood in the last episode. But now what you should say and what you should not say is something that we have to discuss. So we, even when we discuss about what we should say and we, what we should not, we should not be attached to the result. Okay, what does that mean, not attached to the result? Sometimes when we're learning something, how to go about in the relationship, we learn with an intention, then this should happen, you know. Okay, okay. if I do this, then she should not go out in the rain. Like an expectation, you mean? Like an expectation. Okay. Because okay. when we are accepting, what we can do with our child is we can guide them. Hmm. We can influence them. Hmm. We can share with them. But we can't still control them. Right. You can have the best intention. Mm. You can have the best of method. Mm. Still, it depends totally on the child, the choice they make. True. True. And the choice they make, they face the consequences. Right. So, I love my child, but when I'm attached to the child, I try to control the child because I want to control their fate also. Okay. I want everything to happen very well in their life yeah. because what's going to happen in their life affects a lot, has a lot of effect on me. True. You know, if they are happy, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. If they are sad, I'm sad. If yeah. they are healthy, I feel yeah. good. If they fall sick. Yeah, I feel sad. So in this context, it's again the condition that, you know, yes. I don't want her to play in the rain because if she plays, she's going to fall sick. If she falls sick, I'm going to feel really low and upset so about it. So there's that fear. Yeah, there is See? fear. So wherever there's attachment, there's this fear. Mm -hmm. How deep it is. I don't want her to go in the rain because she will fall ill. And if she falls ill, I will feel very bad. Or I will have to mm -hmm. take a leave or take her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And you know, I see that future which has not really happened. And I go into state of fear. And it's actually pretty selfish because I'm actually worried about me. How yeah. I feel and not yeah. really about her falling And then Ill. I say, I love you. Yeah, so is it, this again, love? it is because a love with... <laughs> conditions right it's 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 actually no love there's no love here it's very wow. there's just conditions and expectations that you have to behave in such a manner so that i feel good hmm. i want that energy from you i want you to behave in a certain manner so that i feel good hmm. but here firstly the intention is very pure that i am sharing this bit of advice only for your benefit okay whether you do this or you don't do this, it's not going to affect my state of mind. Okay. So when I'm telling her, don't play in the rain, um, whether she listens or doesn't listen, I'm still going to be okay. stable and okay. Yes. Okay. But how long, sister, <laughs> am I going to tell her, don't play in the rain and she doesn't listen, I have to say it again, don't play in the rain. Yeah, so, so you accept that playing in the rain is fine. And yeah. when you accept and send that energy of respect, Actually, 50% work is done. Because when I receive that energy of acceptance and love, I come very close to you. The bonding in the relationship is such that I want to listen to your advice in most cases. Mm. Because I know whatever you're going to say is going to be for my benefit. That's the relationship, you know. Relationship is more exchange of energy. Right. So when I receive that energy of acceptance and respect, I come very close. In my mind, deep down, I know whatever you're saying is for my benefit. So I am going to pay attention to your advice. I'm going to listen to it very keenly with interest. 
so now when you tell me that listen uh, whatever the little one the darling that you should not play in the rain because you will fall ill and you have school and this the more chances that your daughter will listen to you and will not do it mm. but again there is 1% chance that she may not listen to you mm. you know my daughter has a mind of her own and i have tried a lot of patience you know saying it again and again and again um and often i find that it's a very long route um because as a working mother i don't really have as much time to to take this long route and there are so many other shorter cuts that i could take you know i could maybe just um instill some fear in her and tell her you know you'll get grounded or i could you know um raise my voice and speak with her which is which will give me quicker results and it works she does get result when you use your voice and you say it loudly and you you tell her that you will not get your pocket money for this month or i will not allow you to go for this birthday party so does that work so for that moment she won't play in the rain and i no, get no, what no, i simply does it work um out of your experience yeah, whatever it is yeah my experience in the same context i get her to do what i want her to do so it does oh, work it okay. does work i get it what i'm trying to bring you is that it does work Right. why we get into this beliefs and why we get into the system of raising our voice and using authority and using control because we see results right it may be wrong it is sending the negative energy but why we are getting into the habit is because we are getting the result but what result we are getting here is we are getting things done our way right you know yeah. that's one result mm. and the, that result makes me feel very good mm. temporarily my ego is also satisfied mm. you know ego says that i am right mm. and because i am right you supposed to do what is right and when i see you doing yeah that right what i think is right yeah. i feel comfortable my ego is satisfied yeah. so what happens is you get the result mm. Mm. and we start using this method we get into the habit of using this method but one thing that we can't see which is very uh, subtle which we don't realize is that every time i'm using this authority i'm also sending negative energy hmm. and i'm pushing my daughter away how would i be pushing her away because what you want in the relationship what kind of energy you want i want her to love me I, you know in in an in a relationship what energy you want to receive from the other person positive energy. so when i use control and authority what oh, is the energy okay i'm sending negative energy by we don't realize to, okay so what you're saying is that if i am instilling fear in her that she's going to get grounded or i'm going to say that you're going to i'm going to punish yeah. you you won't go for a birthday party i'm sending fear and that fear is you are not sending fear okay you are just using control mm-hmm. and she is creating fear okay okay see what mm-hmm. your the energy that you are using the method that you are using is control because your mother you are at that role where yeah. you can use the authority right and she is at a position at a role where she cannot use that authority yeah. Yeah. so she is experiencing fear right okay you are not sending fear i'm not sending okay. you are just sending that energy which is negative of course but you're controlling but she is creating fear that little mm. being that child actually knows no fear mm. Mm. but when we use this method for the first time mm. a thought comes to our mind that what will happen if i am locked in a room or this person will and you know we use these methods that if you do this i'm going to leave you in this room i am going to lock you and this person will yeah. come and this person will yeah. take you yeah. and this person will do this and we want the result you know see how mm. damaging it is for the child mm. sometimes all we want is the result because we don't have time and we want to use the shortcut right. but the child actually knows no fear hmm. i teach the child fear when i tell the child that i'm going to lock you in the room for the whole night the child has a mind of your of her own you yeah. just said so there will be some thoughts in our mind and those thoughts will be like for the whole night i'll be locked in the room what will happen will that person come will they eat me will they take me away no mama don't do this with me you know and this thought creates fear in them right as a mother then from what i hear you say i have two roots i have a long root which has a lot of love and patience and telling her with a lot of affection and respect not to go in the rain yeah and then i have a shorter cut where i can you know criticize her or scream at her or yeah. ground her or punish her or instill some fear in her um and often as working parents it's the shorter cut that's 
that's that's so much easier and quicker and gives you the results that you mm. that you want and it's a longer cut that most parents really don't have the <laughs> time and energy for and it gets me thinking what is the impact therefore of these two roots on the child i mean somebody using a lot of the shortcut yeah but how does it impact the child see what you want in life just the results or you want to build the relationship see you have mm. to build a relationship just mm. because you are a mother and uh, mm. she's your daughter or the son doesn't mean you have this natural relationship mm. relationship is an exchange of energy okay. you have to build that relationship when you know some people say oh we have a very good relationship mm. that means the exchange of energy between these two souls is always positive the yeah. energy that flows from me to you is also positive and the energy i receive from you is also positive that right. is exchange of energy and that is relationship right now of course we two souls and through the day especially mother and child they so connected to each other they thinking about each other all the time especially small children mm. the influence is only of the parent they have still not gone to school or something i'm talking about very young right. children so the influence of friends is not there the influence of relatives is not there the influence of environment is not there so the major influence is actually of the parent it's true the yeah. major influence is of the mother the mother spends the maximum time with the child mm-hmm. the child is receiving your energy 24/7 actually from the time when the child is in the womb yeah from that time what you're thinking you're sending that energy that vibration to the child so when we are building if the motive is to build a relationship and not just get the results we will never use a shortcut so what happens to children who have been exposed to a lot of the shortcut what happens to them eventually eventually i think personally i meet lot of children see if you continuously get negative energy one thought that comes to your mind is they don't understand me because most of the time they are right from their perspective mm-hmm. as a parent you're perfectly right from your perspective that mm-hmm. you should not play in the rain you should not go out late you should not wear such clothes you should not talk on phone various things you are right mm-hmm. but if you don't sit and talk about it you don't hear the other person you don't have that one to one heart to heart conversation mm-hmm. and you don't accept and respect the child child actually never realizes that they are wrong okay so a time comes when they just stop communicating happens usually in the teenage years yes and you won't see it a lot in toddlers it manifests much yes. later toddlers they are dependent on you mm. so even if you create fear they will come back to you they they fall back to you time and again there's nothing that they can do about it you are the only source right. but once they grow up and they find people or the beings different mm. people who accept them the way they are and that's why one of the most beautiful relationship is friends so you have a lot of youngsters then looking outside and dependent on friends more than their own parents yeah. and then parents wonder where did i go wrong what did i do wrong i did everything in the interest of the child because the intention was always pure no every time you were giving an advice to the child mm. your intention was to make them this perfect human being right you know what yeah. you thought was perfect and you kept giving them that kind of advice because you wanted them to grow up to be a wonderful person not realizing they're wonderful actually from their own perspective mm-hmm. see you can help them influence and change particular sanskars but you can't keep rejecting them for what they are mm-hmm. because in their own sense they're right they're just mm-hmm. different you know mm-hmm. can you see the difference they're yeah. not wrong they're different mm-hmm. but every time i tell them that you have to behave this way and your way is wrong mm-hmm. it actually affects their self respect so cuz i'm negating their you're point negating of view. them you're okay. rejecting them these okay. children normally grow up with very low self respect mm. because if every time you keep telling me that i am wrong then gradually that thought becomes very deep you know okay. and especially my mother yeah. or my father keeps negating me or rejecting me yeah. and the quality of thoughts that i create in my mind is that you know i'm no good true i don't think i can do this i'm always wrong they don't trust me they don't believe me yeah. they don't think that i can do this so my confidence level goes down goes down my self respect goes down and this happens very slowly because the mother and the father are actually the most important people in that child's life 
I remember reading this, sorry to interrupt you, but I remember mm. reading this very beautiful thing. We have a spiritual class every mm. day where um, we hear very elevated versions directly from God. Mm. And in one of the Murlis, in one of these spiritual classes, it said that the mother should never get upset with the child. Never. That's so tough, sister. <laughs> That's the role of a mother. No matter what they do, no matter how they behave. See, your role is to um, to elevate them. Mm. But what if I feel that irritation and frustration creeping up on me? What do I do? I should not let it come out. Which is child. fine. Okay. If you're getting irritated, the first realization is that it is not right. It's negative energy. Mm. You know, you don't have to suppress it. Right now in the show, we're just trying to realize that it's not right. Mm. You know, a lot of times there's not that realization also. We think to get irritated when my child is fine. Mm. To get angry to discipline my child is fine. To be authoritative and even if they experience fear, it is fine. You know, they will learn this way. Some parents come and tell me, of course they got angry. But see, I'm changed. If they hadn't done this so many years ago, I would have not changed. So sometimes a habit can change, but the pain will never go. Mm. And it manifests itself in such subtle ways that it will really not show in a very obvious manner, right? It could be loss of self-confidence in yeah. the child, lack of self-esteem, which I think in a later stage is then very, very difficult to work on, right? It's very difficult. It's not something like a seven-day course to improve your self-confidence. Trust me, it's not like that. Yeah. You yeah. can't bring a child and say, yeah. now increase their confidence. It, it is not yeah. something that goes down in seven days yeah. and it's not something that you can build in seven days. Yeah. And the most obvious thing that you can see, see, and I was talking about that, I scolded the child and I saw the change. Yeah. But then that child will also grow up to a to be a parent who will use the same mechanism on their children. You okay. learn by an example. Right. I have to ask myself, what do I like? See, we're all ready to become better. Mm. We're not so rigid. None mm. of us think that we are perfect. We all want to change. We all want to become better. But if you want me to do what you think is right, I'm not ready. Mm. Can you see the difference? Yeah, I, can see, I, can I don't see. really think I am perfect. Mm. I am ready to make a change. I am ready to bring a change in myself. Mm. Mm. But I need to get that energy from you where I feel, okay, I am going to think about it. And what you are saying makes sense. And I am going to give it a thought. And I will mm. um, see what we are trying to change in the other person is a sanskar. Mm. And sanskar is not an on and off button. Mm. So what is a sanskar, sister? It is a habit. It is something that you have done for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when you do something for a long time, it becomes natural. Okay. Sanskar is something when then you don't think whether I should do this or not do it. But what happens when you do something for the first time, you're conscious about it. You know, mm. anything, any habit, when you're doing it for the first time, you're aware of it. But when you do it repeatedly, mm. it becomes so natural, like anger. Mm. You know, the first time you use anger, you actually, the mind says whether I should use anger or I should do it with love or, you know, just use authority or assertiveness. But once I use anger and I see the result, I see, oh, you know, it's so easy. You just mm. have to raise your voice and things happen. I um, was asking them to do this with so much love and it was not happening. And I just raised my voice and it happened. Now, that that is one instance. That is with one person. But because I got the result... And the purpose today is just to get the result, you know, this way or that way. It's just to get the result. It's not about the relationship. So I get into that understanding that, okay, anger works better than saying it softly yeah. or with love. Yeah. And then I start using it with other people also. Yeah. And I start using it with people without experimenting whether they may understand the language of love or not. Yeah. I just start using anger as a weapon at all times. And then when I use it a lot, it becomes so natural that I don't even realize. Mm. So it becomes a new normal. It becomes a new life. normal. So if I have to think of myself as a parent and say, I'm going to criticize my yeah. child, if I keep doing it over and over and again, my natural parenting style will be that of being critical. Yes. And I'll never be able to step out of that mold and be naturally loving and positive and, you know, and you will not even realize because every time you're criticizing, you think you are you are helping them to grow. You know, you're telling them they're false. You're telling them where they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because uh, let's take a moment and understand what exactly 
as a parent we do when we criticize a child like if you are criticizing your mm-hmm. child mm-hmm. how do you go about it i'll tell her that you're wrong you you did this badly um this is not the right way to do it mm-hmm. don't you understand i've told you so many times before so and um, the quality of thoughts in this um if i have to think it's really frustration coming out <laughs> in what i'm saying because yes. i'm tired of saying that again and again and and in my mind i think but i'm pointing out your faults and i'm pointing out your faults for your benefit so that you become aware of where mm. you are wrong mm. and you change that mm. but i am making them aware of their faults faults and i want them to change mm. but to bring any kind of change mm. i am expecting them to change i am expecting them to change a sanskar mm. which has become normal it requires lot of power so what you're saying is very deep sister that if you really want to change yeah. any kind of behavior yes. you need ah uh, yeah you, you just need. don't need knowledge if you are repeating the fault of the child again and again i'm sure by now the child knows that they have this fault yeah and if you continue to repeat that fault again and again it's only going to bring their self respect down Mm. because they don't know how to change it it's not mm. that they really don't want to change mm. they really want to change it so many mm. times you will realize when you're having a conversation and it's it's an easy conversation not when you're frustrated or irritated it's an mm. easy conversation the child will also agree that you're right i need to change mm. this and this mm. is not the right habit so somewhere deep down they're aware of it mm. but just being aware of it you cannot change it mm. so you need power mm. and power is also an energy Right. but when you get frustrated are you empowering me or you disempowering me when i get frustrated i'm sending a truckload of negative energy to you and that's weakening you which is disempowerment see okay so how do i empower her you know in this entire situation what is it that i'm supposed to what is the opposite you know? of criticism um opposite is appreciation it's not that we don't oh. know we do but now you will say but then how can i appreciate for something that they don't have yeah. so we don't have to appreciate appreciate them for what they don't have we have to appreciate them for what they have i remember our founding father our dadi shared that when they came and they were living together of course they came with their weaknesses and strength and if somebody would go to him with a complaint saying and the complaint could be something big also that they stole something or they were not on time or they were rude the first thing is it would not affect his attitude towards that child he understood mm. that the child is beautiful is very special mm. originally is pure mm. but this is one of the weakness it's not them you now sometimes we start identifying that particular child with that weakness yeah. it's one of the weakness but mm. originally they are very special pure mm. it's something that they have acquired and we have to help them acquire a separate sanskar mm. so that they can leave this uh, this dark spot which is there mm. on that being mm. so he would call that child and would very lovingly talk to that child with so much love with so much good wishes and he would talk to that particular child about his qualities oh okay oh my child you are like this and you have this qualities and you're so good at this and you're so good at that and genuine you know not pretending mm. genuinely because every soul has lot of specialities and when he would do that sending such positive energy the self respect of the child would come up Mm. And when I am in a very high self-respect, it's very easy for me to respect you. Okay. Low self-respect, I can't right. respect you. Mm. Swaman say samman. Mm. So when I have high self-respect, it's very easy for me to respect you. So when I talk about your qualities, mm. your self-respect increases, and you have this genuine respect for me mm. and for my advice and for mm. what I am sharing. So now when I say, but you have this little one weakness if you change this you are just perfect yeah yeah so yeah. i am motivated yeah. to at least think about that weakness yeah. and do everything that i can to mm. change that yeah. this is empowerment wow so if you want to change any behavior in any person i think this is a universal law that you could use you could focus on the positives the strengths the qualities yeah. and appreciate that person so you really empower the person to make that this is love change. this is love this wow. is love love is empowering love is never disempowering wow. so the true meaning of love is that every time the energy mm. that flows from me to you empowers you not brings you down yeah. beautiful sister thank you so much for your beautiful insights 
we look forward to talking again with you thank you sister so viewers i hope you enjoyed this session as much as i did there were some beautiful tips and advice for all parents out there from a parenting perspective the choice is yours whether you'd like to use a long route or a short route a short route of criticism complaining instilling fear in your child or a longer route of love patience respect and appreciation you can empower your child to transform and make a beautiful life thank you